the NCAA will never beat the NFL. And I know you're probably already thinking there's an obvious argument. The NFL is professional and the NCAA is amateur. People have argued both ways for many years, but to this point, the NFL still reigns supreme. The first point I bring to the table is the upholding of the core objective of football, which is winning. Auburn's going to win the football game! Auburn's going to win the football game! In the NFL, if you win every game, you won a Super Bowl. Winning in the NFL is rewarded, and it is an objective idea. It is not based on anybody's decision. It is simply somebody wins and somebody doesn't, and that makes you better than others. College football compromises that idea. The idea that winning is the core objective of football is not present in college football, and they continue to make changes to it and continue to further distance themselves from the idea of winning football games. It's got five inches on them, but just too much. When the NFL schedule came out for the 2023-24 season, there was one day in particular on the calendar that piqued my interest. Saturday, December 21st. For months now, we've known that the first round of the college football playoffs will be played on December 20th and 21st. Three of those games will be played on Saturday. When I saw the NFL schedule, I was surprised to see an NFL doubleheader on that Saturday. Might I add, the only Saturday games of the entire NFL season. This isn't just any NFL doubleheader. The first game, the Houston Texans versus the Kansas City Chiefs. The second game of the day, the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Baltimore Ravens. We will get the chance to see the NCAA go head-to-head -head with the NFL. The NFL is going to dominate. And I think this scheduling decision was simply a power move on the NFL side. They know that this is a huge day for the NCAA and for the college football playoff, and they won't let them have it without getting a little bit of shine for themselves. The NFL simply dominates this matchup. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me. Hurt my feelings. According to a survey conducted by St. Bonaventure University in 2023, 72% of Americans watch NFL games live. From the college perspective, research company Big Chalk conducted a survey. The results of that survey convey that one third of Americans tried to watch a college sports event in 2023. And that's just college sports, not specifically college football. So that includes if somebody intentionally was trying to watch a college basketball game a women's college basketball game, a college baseball game amongst the rest. If you were to go over to football, the numbers would drop drastically. You may remember that last season, the NFL exclusively streamed a game on Peacock during the playoffs. This was a wild card game between the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs on a Saturday afternoon. That game that ended 26-7 to in the freezing cold weather reeled in an astonishing 22.9 million viewers but was the least viewed playoff game of the wild card round last season. With 22.9 million viewers, that would make it the third most viewed college football game of the entire season last year. Only two games had more viewers than that wild card game, and it was the Rose Bowl between Michigan and Alabama in the college football playoff national championship game between Michigan and Washington. If you don't think that comparing the playoffs in the NFL is fair for college football, let's compare the regular season. During the regular season, the NFL reeled in an average of 17.9 million viewers per game. 17.9 million would put you fifth last season in college football's viewership numbers. Beating out Alabama versus Georgia in the SEC championship game by half a million viewers. Okay, if you think the ratings aren't fair, let's talk money. Can take a knee and try a 56-yard field goal. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. The NFL's current TV rights deals bring in a total of $13.5 billion yearly. The biggest TV deal in college football is the Big Ten's TV contract that is split between Fox, CBS, and NBC. In that contract, the conference brings in $1.2 billion dollars annually their second biggest contract the big 12 making 380 million dollars annually and after that is the sec making 300 million dollars annually in case you don't want to do the math that's just under two billion dollars spread across the top three conferences tv deals in college football so the nfl once again stumps college football but how can they compete fire to the end zone touchdown 
My first idea, take the best 32 programs, split them in half, and then split them in quarters. Make a 32-team league with 16-team conferences and four-team divisions and make them play for a spot in the playoffs. Seriously, though, they don't need to change the number of teams or conferences or anything of that matter. I believe the first step is NIL and Transfer Portal. They need to figure out how it's going to be regulated, how it's going to change. How can a team use it to their advantage? How can a team use it correctly? And what will stop teams from abusing these two rules? It seems as though the college football landscape has hit the reset since NIL and Transfer Portal rules changed. Now the NCAA is tasked with figuring out how to police these, how to use them correctly, and how to convey that to the teams of their conferences. And then from there, decide your playoff format. We just got to a 12-team playoff, and we're already hearing rumors of a 14-team playoff. Figure out everything else behind the scenes, and then figure out the playoff. In my opinion, it's easier to be an NFL fan than a college football fan. Like we've covered already, you just have to win in the NFL. You don't have to worry about the strength of schedule or who your team is playing and who's not playing, who's injured, who's healthy. It's simply a matter of winning football games. The ideals of just winning games have been compromised in college football a lot. In scenarios like in 2024, where Florida State missed it, but they won their conference and won every game they played, they showed that they didn't value a conference championship. But a Georgia team team that won every single game except their conference championship didn't make it in showing that they value a conference championship that's what makes the nfl so easy it's an objective system why make the decisions when you don't have to allow the decisions to make themselves and the ncaa would benefit you also can't blame parity for the differences between them there was no parity in the nfl for years with the patriots dynasty there was no parity for years in college football with Alabama's dynasty. Now, in both leagues, you have newcomers in the dynasties with teams like Georgia and teams like the Kansas City Chiefs. So you can't blame parity. Dynasties are inevitable, but what you get to see on the field doesn't change in the NFL. In the NCAA, people are more worried about what goes into a season rather than what goes into a game. The NCAA is driven by predetermined storylines. That's how the AP poll works. That's how we lead into a college football playoff poll. That's how we lead into any of the rankings or any storylines or Heisman voting or anything else involved in the whole scheme of college football. It's all driven by the media and the storylines. I think the NFL benefits from being driven by performance on a weekly basis. Just because you're a hyped up team going into the season doesn't give you more merit than another team that simply wins games during the season. I don't want any of this to seem like I don't like college football. It's one of my favorite things ever. I will never stop being a fan of college football, but it can't outdo the NFL. Don't let everything I've said stop you from being a college football fan or make you hate the NFL for being better or whatever you'd like to think. Fuck all that because college football is still amazing. There is still amazing parts of college football. We get to see some of the greatest athletes in the world compete at the earliest stages of their careers. We get to see a 22-year-old who's going to sell insurance in a year, catch a touchdown over a future NFL cornerback. And we get to see it 25 times on a Saturday, and then we do it again the next week. That's what's amazing about college football, is the story and everything that goes on. And knowing that maybe these guys aren't going to be the best of the best in their sport, but they're going to be the best of the best on that field on that day. College football is amazing. And don't let anything take that away. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to hear me ramble more and more about sports, you can hear it in about one to two hour bits over on the podcast. Make sure you give it a listen. Second and short on all platforms. Give us a follow there on social media. Subscribe, comment, like, turn on post notifications to keep up to date with everything we're doing here. If you'd like to see more content like this, let us know. Leave a like, leave a comment, shoot us a DM on one of our social media accounts. Let us know what you guys want to see here because we'd love to start making more and more content for y'all. So make sure if you want more coverage, check out the podcast on Mondays and Fridays and keep back here every Wednesday for some more content. I'll catch you all later. Peace.